Previously on the Little Manistee River. After arriving to my starting location at Spencer Bridge and hiding my kayak in the weeds, I picked up my shuttle driver at Harina Canoe and Kayak Rental and was on the water paddling in no time. The king salmon were abundant as well as the twists and turns of the Little Manistee. Holy moly, you should see the freaking fish in here. Oh my gosh. Lots of twists and turns. I think this is my fifth take on doing some kind of intro about where I started. And finding a good campsite proved to be difficult as darkness settled in quickly after only eight miles of paddling. I'm coming up on six o'clock. Got to find somewhere to camp here soon. After hanging my hammock in a wreck area, I enjoyed a hot meal along the river anticipating what lie ahead on the next 40 miles of the Little Manistee River. Good morning. Slept pretty good last night. It's uh, just a hair after 7 a.m. I'm gonna have some breakfast skillet and get back on the water right away. Try to get eight hours of paddling in today. Knock off a good chunk of this river. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Beautiful early fall day on the river. Except for one thing. I forgot my coffee. I don't know how I did that. That's one of my favorite parts of the morning when I'm camping out is enjoying a cup of coffee. I actually looked on my maps to see how far it was to find a coffee shop. But it would, nothing would come up. Ugh. Oh well. Those things happen sometimes. And we're off on day two. It's about 8.30 a.m. Just left camp a few minutes ago. So that little recreation area parking lot that I camped at last night was Bass Lake Road. The intersection of Bass Lake Road and River Road. So even though I went 13 and a half miles yesterday, it was six miles by road to where I parked and put in. That tells you how many twists and turns there are. I don't have a thermometer with me, but I'm guessing it is mid 40s. As you can see, I have my hat and gloves on. Um, and, uh, I took my puffy off just so it wouldn't get wet and put my uh, windbreaker on and my rain jacket with a long sleeve underneath it and I have socks and shoes on. There's no way I would be able to just wear Crocs today. I would be freezing, my feet would be freezing. So now that I'm paddling, it's not too bad. I'm guessing it's in the mid 40s. So nowhere near frost, but it's definitely cold today. So it's probably a good thing I camped where I did last night because I'm a mile further down the river and I haven't really seen anything conducive to camping along the riverbank. Um, a couple spots that could have worked, but it was a little bit of a steep bank and then a lot more private property. So, yep, that was a good decision last night where I would have been setting up in the dark. And as I say that, here's a spot right here that probably would have worked. This is the most residential area I have been through so far. Houses on both sides now. So we've been going by a beautiful area to camp in. I don't know if you can see that over there. It's easy to get out. Lots of trees. No more homes. We must be uh, kind of in a public area again. But anyway, it was uh, two and a quarter miles down the river from where I stayed at last night. I probably couldn't have made it this far. Well, I could have made it this far last night, but it would have been, been getting dark on me. But this it would have been a perfect place to camp. I marked it on my Gaia GPS, and I will definitely leave these coordinates in the description box below if you are ever on this river looking for a place to camp. Wow, look at that sunshine behind me. Man, it's glorious. So today, I'm hoping to go a minimum of 20 miles, possibly 25. But like I said earlier, I wanna, whew, man. Uh, like I said earlier, I want to be off the water no later than five. I would consider even getting off at four because that would give me 
Now 430, that would give me eight hours on the water. I want to do eight hours of paddling at three miles an hour, which I think is pretty conservative if I'm not getting out. Um, that's 24 miles, so yeah. And that should set me up for a fairly easy day tomorrow, but I don't know for sure because since I don't know exactly where I'm at, I don't know how many miles I have, but hopefully I can figure it out here soon with some pictures of the maps I took. Once I get to a landmark that I recognize, maybe some sort of bridge or something. Seen a lot of ducks this morning, but only two or three king salmon. Really nice camping area. I don't see any properties around here or homes. Wow. What an awesome spot up there on the right in those hemlocks. That's a pretty unique bridge. Huh. Don't see anything that it belongs to. It's out here in the middle of nowhere. Perfect fall day again. Haven't been seeing near as many king salmon today, but I've seen five or six. I'm about ready to build a spear <laughs> so I could have sashimi tonight. Nice little piece of property there. For the last mile, it has been super windy. I mean, it has not been a relaxing float. That was a workout, but it was enjoyable still. I didn't get hung up yet. I haven't had to get out yet. So whoever maintains this river and cuts these logs out has done a phenomenal job. Sometimes they're very narrow passages, but I've always been able to get through. I've never seen a little dock like that. That's a pretty good idea. Instead of putting poles out in the water, use a, an existing tree or bury a tree and build a dock on top. Well, what do you know? My first rope swing. This looks like a public access area. I wonder what this is. It's not too bad of a rope swing. It's only two foot deep though. First property I've seen with a fence. It's kind of neat. It is 11 o'clock and I'm eight miles in for the day. Making pretty good time. I'm starting to think about looking for a spot to get out and stretch my legs and get off my butt for a few minutes. But it is not going to be easy to find a spot because it's very overgrown on the banks and where there are places, it's because someone lives there. I'm sure I'll find something here eventually. Just enjoying the beauty of nature, the stillness, the peacefulness. And this is very relaxing. Even though I've went by 50, 75 cabins and homes this morning. I've only seen two people out, three, three families out. And two of them were renters, so they didn't know the area. But uh, one person I did ask, you know, where am I at? How far to the next bridge? And they still weren't very helpful. So I really have no clue how far I am. I could be halfway through this trek. I could be a third of the way, I don't know. Found me a nice little spot to pull up right between the tree branches there. It's warming up nicely. I'd say it's upper 50s already. Had to shed the rain jacket. I was getting hot. Well, as soon as I stretch my legs for a few minutes, we'll get right back on the water. Currently 10 miles in. So, um, even though I'm almost 11 miles in for the day and 24 for this trip, I don't know if I'm halfway done or a third of the way done. I might have to stay out here another night. I just don't know. Hopefully I'll get some cell service here shortly and I can figure out where the heck I'm at. I think those are cattails. 
look a little different than the ones we have in Ohio on our ponds. I haven't heard a person or a car or seen a house, a road, a bridge, nothing for over an hour. This is pretty nice. But at the same time, I kind of want to get my bearings and know where I'm at. Oh, just soaking it all in. The last kayak float of 2022. You may be asking, well, why does this have to be your final kayak float of 2022? Well, it's going to get cold, and I don't enjoy kayaking when it's really cold. And I got a lot of other trips planned. A lot of backpacking trips, a possible FKT coming up here soon, and a couple RV trips with my wife, a 50-mile ultra race. I mean, I got a full calendar of events for the rest of October and the first half of November. So there will not be time for another kayak trip. This is it. So I'm soaking it in and enjoying and relishing every moment. Well, these ducks are sticking around quite a while. Usually they take off way before I get this close. There they go. And another heron. <laughs> I haven't seen any deer, but a ton of waterfowl. That's kind of a unique way to build a dock. Kind of cantilevered out from the shoreline with a... Uh, almost has some uh, attributes of a suspension bridge. This section right here kind of reminds me a little bit of the Edisto River, minus the Blackwater. Just the way the shrubs look there on the right, that's the way the Edisto was all over the place, all the way down. Just thick, overgrown shrubs right out to the banks. Very few spots to exit. And then you look ahead to this spot, and this reminds me of the Asabo, sections of the pine, sections of the big manistee. And we're getting more sections with more width and slower, deeper water. It's about, I'd say, two to three feet on average, with quite a bit at one foot or less. But yeah, this is a beautiful river. Someone's driving a lawnmower over there. There's a house right there. Beautiful cabin overlooking the river. Man, I hope I can own a piece of property on a river someday. My wife and I would really, really enjoy that. I have a feeling this is mainly just a day float river. Not a lot of the liveries um, service this river. And I have not seen one established campsite yet. I'm 11 miles in today, and I did 13 and a half yesterday, so that's 20, 24 miles and not one campsite. Maybe that will change as we get closer to Lake Michigan. Man, there's a lot of waterfowl and birds in this river. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. I mean, there's definitely been some tight, difficult to navigate areas, but it's a beautiful river. And if you're trying to get away from all the people on the Big Manistee and the Pine River, come check out the Little Manistee. Just floating along, lightly paddling on the beautiful Little Manistee River. 12 miles in and I have no idea where the heck I'm at. <laughs> Does it really matter? Even if I'm not near as far as I think I am, eventually I'll get to a Stronich, which is the town on the Manist Lake Manistee, a few miles from Lake Michigan. And there are restaurants everywhere. So I will survive. Wow. Now, if that is not quintessential Michigan River right there, I don't know what is. So I've been in the water for four hours. And the entire time, I kept hoping that I would come across somebody out on their deck having coffee that would offer me a cup. Oh, I'm missing my coffee so bad. I mean, maybe there's still a chance for that to happen. I don't know. I'm probably going to have to go without it until tomorrow. I'm sure I can find some coffee somewhere tomorrow as I get close to Stronich and uh, Lake Manistee and Lake Michigan. Man, someone was just out here drinking coffee on their porch this morning. 
and wave me in, say, hey, good morning, how you doing, would you like a cup of coffee? I'd be like, yes, please. Nice little play area. Some kayaks over there. Little dock and a slide. Looks like summer camp to me. All I know is I need to own a piece of property on a river someday. Preferably the, the pine, the big manistee, or the ensemble, or the little manistee. I love them all. And here we have the very first weeping willow that I have seen on the Little Manistee River. Gorgeous. And just beautiful houses and cabins everywhere you look. My goodness. Well, I finally ran into a person that was out by the river and I asked him where I was. I am way past Bear Track Campground and 10 and a half mile bridge. So that is great news. I'm coming up on nine and a half mile bridge, I think she said, or nine mile. And between nine mile and six mile, that is where the water gets really fast. And speaking of fast, I got a little uh, fast thing I gotta navigate here real quick. She said that uh, as long as I felt comfortable doing the Pine River, that this wouldn't be that bad. So. I have done the Pine River, so I feel comfortable with whatever's up ahead. I have read that it can be up to class two rapids, so we will see. But at least I know I'm making great progress. I'm a lot further ahead than I thought. Someone's been shooting for about an hour. And finally, near the area where they're shooting. Man, would that be a beautiful place to tent camp or what? Wow. They should put a sign in their yard. $10. Tent camping. Uh, so I'm assuming this is nine and a half mile bridge, according to the lady that I just spoke with. Nine and a half mile. Lots of creosoted two by twelves. Wow. Let's go take a little break and walk around and stretch the legs. Oh, it feels good to get out of the kayak for a few minutes. Let's go see where we're at here. There's obviously a parking lot here with some signs. Maybe we'll be able to figure out where we're at. Access site. <laughs> it's an access site, but it never says what access site it is. I'm guessing it's nine and a half mile. That lady said that was the next bridge. I mean, I'm having trouble walking. After sitting in the kayak for five hours, it's a little hard to walk. So I just passed a couple of fishermen back there who confirmed that that was indeed Nine Mile Bridge where I stopped. And that six mile is the next one. And they said the water picks up quite a bit up ahead here. So they said it was a very fun section of river coming up. And be ready. Sounds fun to me. All right, so I finally found one of these dead king salmon. I scooped them up just to show you what I've been seeing. I can't even lift them up out of the water. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. It weighs like 20 pounds. There we go. Look at that beast. Two and a half feet long. Gross. That stinks. Just found me another dead king salmon. This one's not too old. I mean, his gills are still pink. <laughs> it's very tempting to cut him open and try taste. Man. I think he just died yesterday or the day before. And he got chewed up a little bit on the backside. Probably from some eagles or something. Check out this paddle wheel. Never seen anything like that before out on the river. That's pretty cool. The 
water has noticeably gotten faster. Still nothing sketchy. It's enjoyable. Nice class one stuff off and on. Just a lot of sharp turns. You gotta really be on it because these sharp turns will throw you right into the debris. But if you plan ahead a little bit with your paddling, Right, right down the middle here. Six mile an hour. Pretty nice. Probably doesn't look that fast to you through the camera. But my last mile was 12.55. All my other miles were 18 to 23. So we are going significantly faster. But it is nothing to be scared about or even really anything sketchy at all if you have basic paddling skills this is no problem at all it's really fun a lot of hairpin turns keeps things exciting a lot of king salmon still there's four right in front of us to the left there and then they disappeared. Man, I've seen so many phenomenal camping spots in the last mile. I'm at 18.7. I can't stop yet. I mean, the sun looks like it's at high noon, even though it's probably like 2 o'clock. So I got to keep on going a little further. But uh, here in about an hour or two, I'll take a sight when I see it. Well, we got our first complete blockage of the entire trip. Doggone it. Got to get out and forage for this one. No way around it. And I ain't going over it. Back paddle over here in the grass and get out. Finally made it to Six Mile Bridge. This is the first bridge with any kind of sign. Six Mile Bridge Landing. Now I know exactly where I'm at. And now I can start looking for a campsite because I wanted to get by this before I found camp. I'm getting hungry. Currently at 20 and one half miles in. I wouldn't mind going a few more miles because the sun just still looks directly above me. And it's like 3.30. So just a little early to stop yet. Unless the perfect sight shows up. With the way the sun is orientated on my left, I think it would be good to find a sight on the river right that's exposed, kind of like it looks right now. So if I can find a good spot to pull out with some good hanging trees, on the right, with the sun coming down on me, that would be ideal. I don't really want a dark shaded spot that's damp and cold. Do I see a potential spot right here on the right? Hmm. Man. Some beautiful hemlocks right there. I'm just wondering how hard it is to get out. We're at 21 miles right now. Oh man. So tempting. There's not really a good spot to get out though. It's still deep here. Well, I decided to go on down just a little further because we're really close to the DNR Weir. W-E-I-R, Weir. Um, it's like a little dam area where they let the fish, where they can open it and close it to let the fish come up. So it must be open. That's why we're seeing a lot of king salmon. But I know there's a, a primitive site campground there, supposedly. I think it's only a mile or two, maybe three away. 
So we're gonna go on just a little bit further, try to make it there, but if something nice pops up between here and there, we're taking it. What a perfect day in pure Michigan. It is currently 4.15 and I'm 22.3 miles in and I am searching for a spot to camp. But I just can't stop. <laughs> this is so nice. I keep thinking there's gonna be something better around the next turn. That's the same problem I always get into. But I still got a lot of sun. So I think we're good. During the next half hour, it's critical to find a good site if I'm gonna have time to get a good fire going and cook all this good food I got. It sounds like I hear something up ahead, like a waterfall sound. I wonder if that's the uh, DNR weir coming up. And I hear people. Uh-oh. What could this be up ahead? Let's go find out. Okay, I think we're at the weir. Yeah. You know, this is the first kind of facilities I've seen in quite some time. Yep, I'm pretty sure this is the DNR weir. So somewhere around here, there's a portage. I think it's on River Right. We definitely need to go investigate this and see what this looks like. How are salmon getting through that into this upper section of the river? That's what I want to know. Very interesting. Huh. All right, well, our portage is right over here. Straight ahead. Pretty easy portage right there. Let's check this thing out. Obviously the good spot to be is over there where those people are. Huh. So I guess the salmon swim up that. Pretty cool. So they open the gates or something. Let them through. Turn around. Take a look at this weir. I'd love to go camp up right there in those pine trees. That picnic table, that'd be nice. All right, let's go find us a campsite. I'm starving. Well, here we are 24 miles in, and it has been nothing but private property since I left the weir. It's desperation time. I need to camp bad. The sun's already starting to get low and I'm starving to death, I'm dehydrated. This is not how I wanted the end of this day to end up. There's still hope. All right, I got high hopes here for this next turn or two. You can see the sun, it's getting low in the sky. It's still up there quite a ways, but you know, this time of year, it gets dark early. We got about a good hour and a half left. Finally found a place to set up camp. Tons and tons of hanging options and not a lot of tall grass. That's what I was looking for. Access off the river. Not the easiest, but it definitely wasn't the hardest. And now that I'm looking around here, I can see that someone has been here before and started a fire. Probably because there's a bunch of private property that way around every turn and no trespassing signs everywhere this is like the first decent place you come to this will work perfect lots of firewood all right time to get a fire going and get some food going i'm starving i have sweet corn a pepper and onion and a rutabaga to saute up in the skillet and purple cauliflower to go along with the main course fresh pork brats
We'll save the rest of that pepper for breakfast to go with my eggs and potatoes. Same with the onion. All right, let's throw a little bit of purple cauliflower in there. It tastes a lot like white cauliflower. There's not much difference. It's mainly just a visual thing. How about we just throw three florets in there? I don't know how these are going to saute up over a fire, but we're going to give it a shot. See how it's white everywhere except at the top. I'm only going to put just a little bit of rutabaga in there. Kind of potato slash turnip flavor. You know what? I need a good cutting board. I need one of those little flexible roll-up ones like my brother Joel has. It'd be perfect for this. All right, we'll just add a little bit more and then we're gonna get the bratwurst on here and get these things cooking. There it is. Let's get the bratwurst added. So I've decided not to cut these bratwursts up. I'm just uh, pinching off chunks out of the casing. Do a little bit of parquet in there, or I can't believe it's not butter, so they have a little bit of oil. Everything's cooking pretty good. Put a pinch of salt and pepper in there. All right, ready to add the final ingredient. I'm gonna try to cut it right in there, off the cob. Oh man, it smells amazing. Man, I'm so hungry. Oh my gosh. It is so good. Mm. Everything ended up cooking perfectly. I can't believe it. Let's try a piece of rutabaga by itself. It tastes, it tastes a lot like a potato, but a little more earthy. A little bit of a turnipy taste to it. Really good. And the purple cauliflower. Oh, man. Mmm. Perfect. It even has a little bit of that char taste that you get when you cook something under high heat on a wok. Mm. Well, let's hit the spot. I like all my choices in tonight's dinner. Very good. In the final episode, my last day on the water was absolutely gorgeous once again. And after a good breakfast over the fire, I set off for the final 10 miles of my paddle on the Little Manistee River. Ready to make the final push to Manistee Lake. And then finally, to Lake Michigan. Eventually passing through Lake Manistee, the mile and a half through the canal. Just about there. That was a long paddle across Manistee Lake. Making our final push to enter Lake Michigan finally fulfilling one of my kayaking dreams, paddling from a Michigan river into the clear blue waters of Lake Michigan.